Now, when we're talking about ostomies and nursing care, really there's some really important pieces post-operatively and for established ostomies that we need to be aware of and talk about. So when we're talking about care for an ostomy, we need to assess the stoma, we need to provide really good skin care, also how do we empty the waste pouch, and also how do we even change that appliance. Now there's quite a bit of pieces for each one of these, but I'm gonna take you through those. Now let's start first with assessment. As nursing, we always go back to assessment, right? So there's quite a bit of points here, but let's talk about why these are so important. Now with a stoma, there's a lot of things can arise, so let's take a look at these. Now at least once per shift as a nurse, you should be assessing that stoma, and here's some things we're gonna look for. So we need to look for skin irritation. So if you take a look at that upper stoma with that red ring around it, Really, if you think about it, any stool or feces or urine that gets on the patient's skin can cause really bad redness and irritation. You can imagine, just like your hands in the winter, if there's dry, cracking redness, it's really painful and not good for the integrity of the patient's skin. Also, leakage can occur. Same sort of thing here to where if stool or feces gets on the patient's skin and it leaks around, that can cause issues. Now, sometimes that may be happened because of the way the stoma was created surgically, or maybe the, the appliance that we use to catch the feces is not fitted very well. So that's something that we can prevent. Now, let's take a look at this picture here. You see that black picture? Okay, this is not what we want, guys. This is a really big issue here. So we need to make sure we alert the surgeon or the physician about this. This is called necrosis. Now, if you remember in nursing, when you see anything that turns black, this is a big no-no. What that means is there's not good blood flow going to this part of the intestine that's on the outside of the abdominal wall, and that's a serious issue. So if we see a darkened black stoma, that is a serious issue. So let's take a minute, what should the stoma look like? Let's just refresh. If you remember seeing those pictures earlier, it should be pinkish or red, nice and round, and it shouldn't look like any of these pictures, right? Now the other thing that can happen with a stoma, man, I know there's a lot, right? We're almost halfway through. So there can be some blockage here, and that's an issue because your patient's gonna feel an increased pain, maybe a lot of nausea and vomiting. Um, the stoma itself could start getting really swollen or edematous. If you see this, you wanna alert your doctor. The other thing that can occur is stoma prolapse. Okay, this is a little scary looking, I know, as a nurse. If you take a look here at this picture, see how that stoma is long, that piece of the intestine is protruding out? Okay, yes, this could happen. Now, you may think, okay, well, how on earth is that going to happen? Well, anytime there's maybe really increased abdominal pressure, maybe the patient tries to lift something heavy, kind of think of like a herniation or a hernia, or if maybe the opening around the stoma is too large, this could all happen. And we call this a stoma prolapse. Now this is particularly, uh, this actually comes up quite a bit with pediatric patients because they kind of have a weak abdominal muscle tone. Now lastly, stoma retraction can also occur. And what, what do we mean by this? So anytime you hear the word retract, right, we kind of think of it, maybe it back up. So what you're gonna see here is the stoma, because there may be a lot of tension on that stoma, maybe because of how it's surgically created, the stoma can maybe recede inside the abdominal wall. And this is also an issue. This could be because of obesity or maybe lack of blood flow. And so guys, I know that was a long list. There's a lot of complications, unfortunately, that can come up with assessing the stoma. And there's even more. But the good news is some of these can be conserv conservatively treated. Now, if conservative treatment fails, then they may have to get surgery again to correct this. Now let's talk about skin care. This is oh so important when we're talking about care for anostomy. Kind of like we talked about earlier, we don't want the irritation that goes around the stoma because this can be really painful for the client. Now, when you're thinking about skin care, just think of with ostomy. Guys, less is more. Think about of like taking a bath, something like that. We're usually gonna use really mild things here. So less is more here, and water is really actually usually sufficient for cleansing the skin. 
However, sometimes if feces gets on the patient's skin, for example, we may need to use a mild soap. Now, when I say mild, I really mean mild. We don't want something with a lot of lotions or fragrances or anything like that, even though we may think, okay, well, wouldn't that be good for the patient's skin? That actually could cause more irritation and issues. So again, mild soap is great. Now, again, things we don't want you to use around what we call peristomal skin or skin around the stoma are things like creams, lotions, powders are a no-no, alcohol pads like we like to use for cleaning for nursing because it can dry out the skin, any sort of like steroidal uh, ointments or creams, that's all a no-no in ostomy care. Because the reason why this is a problem, this can affect how the actual appliance that catches the urine or the feces adheres to the skin of the stomach. And lastly, when we're talking about skin care, there should not be any signs of irritation like you recall from earlier. So really, frequent assessment is key. And now any time that you see, remember that red or broken or irritated skin, make sure you alert your doctor or make sure you follow up.